All right, so we are back on MLB The Show 24 for some more Tigers franchise. Baby, it has been a minute. Um, I don't think I said this on like Twitter or anything, but I did go on a little vacay for like five, six days. So all the videos you saw, the, the last Tigers franchise video, the last F1 video, and then uh, we did something new. Wheel of Rainbow Six Siege, if you want to see more of that, go comment on that video or even this video. Uh, but definitely go onto that one, like, and comment. Uh, let me know if you want to see more of that. Because um, it was pretty fun. I won't lie, outside of the fact that I lagged 24-7 in that video. But that is besides the point. Uh, because here today, we are back on Tiger's franchise. And uh, we're really close to... Catching up to the Twins here. Only three games back as of right now. And I believe... Yeah, so we've got some big in-division series with the Guardians and the Royals. A four-game series with the Royals to end the month of May and head into June. So I think we need to hop right into this thing. The White Sox coming up soon too. Our arch nemesis from last year. We could not beat them. Even if we tried our hardest. Coming off of a 2-1 series win against the Mariners, who are also a decent team right now at 23-12. and 12. Um, Where does that put us in the standings, actually? So we are second in the wild card, uh, the number five seed. believe that means we would be going up against... We're going up against the Rays, who would be the f three. I think that's right. I don't know. But obviously, the end of the season is... Far, far away. We need to get into this one. Um, I don't think I really have anything else to say. So let's just hop right into it and go through this first week. And are you kidding me? We'll keep him active, but it took two games for someone to get injured. Unbelievable. Okay, so the A's offering us, am I a joke to you? 23 years old, six foot four, Daniel Suzak. The problem is I don't know enough about, like, other teams' prospects. Like, this could be a good trade. I honestly don't know. He's only worth 69 k We get three, almost $4 million off of our books, and we could use that spot because we really just haven't been using Joey Gallo at all. And our only catchers right now are Dingler and Rogers that are in the bigs. Scotty Phelps and Grandal are... Both, I believe, in AAA right now, actually. And obviously, Grundahl is not going to get a ton of time. Do we go for that? I mean, C potential. No, I think we can use Joey Gallo in a bigger um, trade, like, that we may, be, may, may do down the line. I think we could use him in that. But three infield prospects have been discovered, so let's view those. Got Sean Kaiser, who looks... Really good. Really good defender. Switch hitting second baseman. 18 years old out of New York. Spencer Takatsu. Takatsu? Spencer Takatsu? Uh, not ranked on the MLB board. 55th in ours. At the high end, looks to be a pretty average hitter, but a really good fielder. Sean Pierce, who I think we were looking at, has dropped from 17th to 72. Why would that be? Because his stuff doesn't look that bad. Is he injured? Maybe? I don't know. Ken Mc McCallum um, does not look that good. Uh, Matthew Townsend. All right. He's not horrible, but Swakos not looking too good. Shang Ho Lee. Yeah, not great. Sergio Ibar or Abar. Okay, yeah, it's these, so some of these guys just not looking that good. But Sean Kaiser does not look that bad. Same with uh, Takatsu. Sean Pierce will have to see because he dropped a lot. That's 55 positions. Very, very interesting. Intriguing. Marcelo Domingo, who we personally scouted last time, 38% progress, 53% interest. That's big. And drops to 9 on our big board, but looks pretty good. Looks like a really solid contact hitter. Isn't going to be a home run threat by any means. But also looks like a really good defender. The reaction is a little bit questionable, but he has the speed, it looks like, to really make up for it. We could always use more pitching. George Wolf 
looks pretty damn solid. I don't know if he'll fall to us, though. We did check out Lester Baca. Um, I don't know if he'll fall to us either. Let's go to starting pitchers really quickly. Sean Boyer would be in the range that we are picking. Stamina, hits per nine, strikeouts per nine all look phenomenal. Let's, let's check out Sean Boyer. That's where we're going to go with. And then third baseman in the central for this first scouting assignment. Um, and did I have, like, moments on? Why are we not getting moments? Oh, there we go. Top of the ninth, two outs. We are down one in Oakland. Zach Jackson trying to put the game away. Joey Gallo has hit a home run. Joe Adele and Brandon Drury on base. Riley Green at the plate. Let's get a single and get Brandon Drury home. We're going to take this pitch really quickly and then see if we can't get in a pinch runner here for Brandon Drury. Akil Badu, um, I don't know if he's back healthy, but he is on the bench. And if he's on the bench, we might as well use him. Because he's got 83 speed. And we could use that speed in this spot. Riley Green can't get a hold of the fastball. And that's a strikeout. Changeup missed it. Another one that I thought I timed up pretty well. It just didn't get contact. Alright, so we've dropped two straight games to the A's, who are actually a solid team in the game. As Jose Leclerc is looking for the save. We got beat 5-4 last game. We got a chance to beat Oakland 5-4 tonight. Zach Zloff up to the plate. Had a walk-off, or not a walk-off, but a game-winning home run against the Yankees earlier this season in real life. But Jose Leclerc is different. That cutter got a lot of zone, but the count does go to one and two. Gets Jalof swinging and ends up on the other side of the plate. What a strikeout by Jose Leclerc. Where was he looking? Oh my goodness, he was way out in front of that. And now Brent Rooker is up to bat. That's a ball. Hopefully... Excuse me? That was a ball? Thank you. I appreciate it. Rooker obviously has a ton of power that we have to be careful of. Tyler Soderstrom on deck. Oh, that slider got a lot. Willie Adamez. Rooker doesn't run very well. He's got to throw to first, and he gets the play. I thought we messed up the timing on that throw. It was not in the green. Oh, my. Gave myself a little bit of a heart attack, but we got it done. Adamez had a home run, a three-run home run. Okay, Adamez, pick it up for us. Joey Gallo went to a four today. I'm assuming he's playing out in left for the injured Akil Badu right now. Yes, so he's playing out in left. Hitting 236, 345 on base. Not bad from the vet. Dingler still hitting 275, much better then Jake Rogers, who's hitting a 179. Dylan Dingler. He, Jake Rogers better look out because Dingler might be taking that full-time position here if he's not careful. Adam is hitting 240, but almost 400 OBP. At 377, Adam is with an 870 OPS. Would be the highest of his career uh, if the season ended today. So love that. Torkelson... Not great, but he can. He's got time to pick it up. Riley Green, eleven doubles. Love to see that from a leadoff. Four games back of the Twins now. Would love to get back. And top of the seventh, bases loaded for Tyler Holton, who looks like he was subbed in in a really really poor spot, but we will try and get him out of it. Nolan Chanel, Chanel, Sean, Seanwell. Miguel, como se dice? That one gets in there for strike one. We do have one out here. So getting a grounder into a possible double play would be huge as Chanel 
goes down 0-2. Obviously, if we can keep him from even making a chance at a play, we will gladly take it. And I think that's what we're going to go for. Change up down low. Got him swinging, but he makes contact. Fouls it off. Go up top with the fastball, and then gets the call. Two down here in the top of the seventh. Tyler Holton, one out away from getting out of this jam, but he has to go through. Maybe one of the best players of all time in Mike Trout. Trout with a horrendous 103 average with runners in scoring position this year as he looks at the slider down low. The entire zone is his hot zone. If they had 2K badges... Mike Trout would have fucking Hall of Fame. Hot Zone Hunters. Torkelson makes a great play. He's got to beat him to the bag and does. We get out of the jam. Tyler Holton. Way to come in and deal. I think we'll finish playing this game. Why not? Up 2-1. At home. Kerry Carpenter hitting in the 9 spot today. That one's popped up on first pitch. That will be an out. That's a poor swing on me. Don't need to be swinging first pitch there. There's literally no reason. Goes for the same pitch. We don't swing that time. We learned, all right? We learned. And that one nearly smoked. Way too early on it. That slider came really far back into the middle of the zone. Little backdoor entry, and we swing and miss. Four-seamer down low. We never had a shot. I've talked about it before. He loves his lefty pitching. One ball, he no can strike. absolutely murder left-hand pitchers, and he's proven that before. That time, it'll be a grounder to first. Couldn't get through the gap, and the Angels are out of the seventh just like that. Taylor Ward up here for the Angels as Holton looks to get through another inning for us. Did a really good job last time. We are going to warm up. Jose Leclerc. So hopefully we can get through this inning with no trouble as Taylor Ward fouls two off that were basically in the same spot. We'll go with the changeup. Opposite side of... Did he go? He went. Oh, come on. We need to try and keep him off. That one rolling up the middle. Adamez. I backed off that throw. That was on me. That was going to be another yellow throw. We don't need to give up a double here in this spot bad timing we'll just have to uh, get our former player in Gio Urshela he was our sole all-star last year Carpenter's got to react he has horrible timing in the outfield and that puts two on Gio Urshela letting us know so now they've got speed on base with Luis Rangifo who we know can take us deep that one way off the plate. One and two the count. We have no out, and Rangifo looks at a sinker that was dead center of the zone. I mean, that came right across his face. Didn't even think about swinging. I mean, we'll take it. O'Neal's got to make a good play here. That one actually got a lot of hang time. Runners will stay. Throw to third anyways. And that is two outs just like that. Huge. Absolutely huge. And now Zach Nito. Once was one of the best prospects in baseball. Flies out to O'Neal who makes two massive plays for us in that inning to get us out of it. Madrigal stays in the game. They bring in Jose Soriano. 23.3% strikeout rate. That's not bad. But... He also had 333 against lefties. Or 33. Lefties are hitting 333 against him. I think it was either lefties or righties. As that is way off. Willie Adamez. Newly acquired this season. Or off season, I should say. And Soriano having some trouble here finding the zone. I don't even think I should be swinging. His stuff has some serious break, though. We got to be ready for that. Ball three. And they say ball three. Poor call there from the ump. 
You can't be liking that if you're Jose Soriano. And then that one gets called as a strike. Fair enough, I guess, but... I really thought that one was outside. I thought that was one of his slurs. It ended up being a sinker. Came back inside. Just inside the outer portion of the strike zone. And now it's Spencer Torkelson's turn. This guy... Soriano's gonna hit us. Would not be surprised if we got hit. Torkelson puts that one through the gap. No, he doesn't. Regifa, what a play. Oh my goodness. Soriano's been a little bit um, erratic here, you could say, in the bottom of the eighth. And I'm really laying off a lot of these. Just because I think I could pull a walk out of this or get a really good pitch to hit. Like the one that we got with Torkelson um, that I thought was going to get through. Great play by the second baseman. Dude. That slurve, man. It has a ton of break. But look at where these pitches have gone. It's all over the place. I'm not really sure what to expect. And it was a slider down low. Had a swing and Drury retired. We'll go to Leclerc to get the save. And here he comes. Out of the pen, our star, all-star even, closing pitcher, Jose Leclerc. Acquired from the Rangers in the offseason. He was a free agent. We brought him in. 16 saves in 16 opportunities. 100% save rate. No, that's and I'm not ready for that to change. Leads the AL in saves. Over Minter, Abreu, and Munoz. Some really, really good pitchers. Closing pitchers, I should say. In the AL. And Jose Leclerc. On top of them all. That one popped up. Into foul ground. Jace Young over. Just too far. That one in there. Four strike three. He was looking. Don't know what he was looking for, to be honest. Because it was a fastball right down the pipe. Leclerc pushes it past him at 95. And now Harrison Bader, who is on the Angels this season. Very interesting. No slider away. Fastball up high. Bader continues to fight here. Go to the changeup. Almost clips the zone. It looks like it did. I understand the no call on that one, though. Go a little bit higher with this fastball now. And we clip the top of the zone. Strike out number two for Jose Leclerc. Bader goes down looking. Two batters seen from Leclerc. Two batters struck out looking. Unbelievable. Last batter due up here for the Angels. Fouled off 0-2. He really thought about it. Let's see if we can get him with the fastball. Push it by him. No, Colt Keith cannot get there. Chanel will reach first with a base knock. And now it's Mike Trout to try and save the day. Our best versus their best. Trout sees ball, or strike one, sorry. Trout pop up into left. Carry Carpenter underneath it. Jose Leclerc, 17 opportunities. 17 saves for the all-star that we acquired from the Rangers. Unbelievable what he has done for us this season. We didn't have the type of closing ability that we do with him. And that is why it was so big to bring him in in the offseason. As Jake Rogers, after I talk a little mess, goes two for three with two home runs, two RBIs. The sole reason that we won today. And like I said, Leclerc gets saved number 17. Tariq Skubal goes six and a third with only one earned run. Love to see that from him. Scouting assignments back up here. Sean Boyer, let's see, let's see. Drops 15 spots to 44 on our big board. The strikeouts still look really, really good. I mean, already has around the 60 to almost 85 Um 
overall in strikeouts per nine. That's really good. Control looks a little sporadic, especially as of right now. We'll keep looking into him. Let's go back and look at Marcelo Domingo, who just looks like a really good contact hitter out in uh, the outfield. Could always use more base hits to lead us off. I think we will switch Domingo now. Yeah, we're picking 17, I think. Um, we're going to look at William Thurston here, another starting pitcher, lefty this time. Uh, 17 on our draft board. Hopefully those strikeout numbers, walks, and home runs all stay that high. And then recently scouted, Brad Krause. Comes in at 111. So maybe a lot of these guys later round picks that we just take a chance on, like a Marlon uh, Flyer. Who has some decent contact um, potential. Not great in the fielding. Kind of just average. Wallace Moore. Just really good speed. I think we will start just scouting positions with James Jenkins now. Let's go right field in the east. And then we'll keep going with Sean Boyer. And then William Thurston, the new... Uh, prospect that we will be scouting. Orioles would like to trade. And Mundo Sosa, 29 years old, third baseman. We do have Jace Young there. I would like to see where he's hitting, but Sosa is not hitting very well. Those numbers are not great, and it doesn't look like he's been in a lot of games anyways, but still, I think we will let that one go. Um, I do want to look at how Jace Young is doing, though. First season, obviously, as a full-time starter for us. Hitting 238, so he's dropped off a little bit. Um, would love to see uh, the on-base percentage get back over 300. Slugging, I'm not too worried about because I think as he develops more, that will come. I mean, .169 MLB service, like, the dude has played what? A total of 63 total games. We're going to rela relax a little bit and let him do his thing. Um, Brandon Drury looks like he's struggling a little bit. I think we're going to bring Colt Keith in against righties. And then we're going to bring... Although it says Joey Gall is on fire, so maybe we'll leave him in for now. Leave Akil Badu on the bench, especially against righties. And then against the lefties, we will take Colt Keith out for Joe Adele to be our DH and leave Brandon Drury in at second. Yeah, uh, Jake Rogers is going to be hitting in the nine spot for us on that one. So that's fixed now. We are still five games behind the Twins. Uh, we did pick up the W against the Angels to win that series 2-1. But now we have got the Cleveland Guardians, who are now 19-27. and We had some trouble with them last year. What I think we're going to do in game one here, we are going to player lock as Matt Manning to see if we can't get him going. Struggling a little bit. The numbers have come way down, but the whip is still high. Um, I'm glad the ERA got under five. We are facing Gavin Williams, so this is the back half of our pitching rotation. I believe Matt Manning's in the four spot for us in the rotation. Let's, let's get him going a little bit here. At home... You got the home fans behind you today. This is a big series for us to take. We need to at least go 2-1 here. And then with the Royals as well, we need to try and win that 3-1. Steven Kwan will be the first man we see today. Obviously, just on base all the time, it feels like. As that one, a roller down the third baseline. First out of the day on the first pitch for hey, yeah, Matt Manning. Right now it's William Thornton turn. Thornton's turn. Manning, I believe, does have either A or B potential. Would love to see that really come out of him. And we can always look to bring Casey Mize up from that re long relieving role and have Matt Manning go down there. Um, we got one if he continues to struggle and maybe Mize continues to progress. As that one oh, lined nice. foul down the first baseline. Maybe you utilize this curveball a little more. That one grounded. Young. The throw to oh. first in time. Thornton does not run very well. That fouled off pitch. Makes it 1-2 here to Naylor. Curveball down low. Damn. Sees it for ball two. Full count. Payoff pitch here to try and get out of the first. Manning. Way up high. We will walk Naylor after being up 
one and two in the count. And now we got to deal with Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez, six-time All-Star. Hasn't missed the All-Star game since 2020. Phenomenal. Slider inside. That one grounded to short. Adames, the play to second. Goes short. And we are out of the inning just like that. Riley Green with a solo home run. And then Colt Keith with a single to give us some insurance here in the top of the second for Matt Manning. That is huge. It's way different for a pitcher to be playing from the lead than from being either playing down or tied. Just a big boost of confidence that your guys are going to give you the runs in case maybe you give up a solo shot. And now we'll see Josh Naylor's brother here in Bo Naylor, 2024 Gold Glove winner, obviously behind the dish. Pretty tall for a catcher, isn't he? Isn't he like 6'2 or something, 6'3? But goes down looking, Bo Naylor. First strikeout of the day for Matt Manning. Naylor got cold feet. Now Gabriel Arias. Smokes one up the middle. No hitter gone here in the second. And we have another runner on with two outs in the top of the second here. Just like in the top of the first. Couldn't put away Naylor to retire the side. Now we will face Andres Jimenez. Who swings and misses at a changeup that I guess was really slow. He wasn't expecting it. We'll go back to that changeup. He's looking for a fastball, and we get him swinging. Manning gets two strikeouts in the top of the second. Great start here. Chase DeLauder will be the first one, I should say first victim here for Matt Manning to go up against in the top of the third. Been super efficient so far through these first two innings. That changeup got a lot of zone. Can't do that again. Going to go curveball to try and put him away. Swings at it. Young can't get it. Adames gets it, though, and yeah. makes a fantastic play. Moving to his right. DeLauder retired. Adames, what a, what a play. He is One showing down. up on both ends for us this year. And that's what we brought him in here to do. In the top of the third, that one to Young. Easy out. Two down here in the top of the third. Let's put away the third batter and retire the side. Thornton fouls off the first pitch. Thornton puts one out into right. O'Neal makes the play. And finally, we, ret we retire the side. Matt Manning. Only two base runners through three innings. Josh Naylor up for his second A.B. Sees strike one. We put him on base um, on balls, obviously, last time. He swings and misses at the changeup. Maybe he's looking for that put-away pitch now. We're going to go fast. And we get him looking. Matt Manning is dealing. Naylor cannot believe it. He's mad. that He didn't think that was a strike. But it definitely was. Look at the placement on those pitches. Probably need to mix it up a little bit more, though, second time through the order. to Because these guys are going to adjust that we are going away so much. we got to start going inside as well to mix it up. That curveball down the line for Jose Ramirez. Got way too much zone. And it, with a hitter like Ramirez, he's going to take advantage of it every single time. Ramirez has really good speed. He takes off. The throw is not in time. I thought he might have gotten him. Eighth stolen base of the year for Ramirez. Uh, no. Two and two the count. We're going to go slider inside. He rings him up. Fifth strikeout of the day, I believe. I just spit everywhere. Went change up down low. Now fastball up top. Looks at it. Could have gotten the call there. We don't get it. Fights off. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Oh, that one gets away. The throw not in time. Ramirez gets to third. Changeup has been reliable for us. 
and it's there again. Bo Naylor strikes out of his shoes, and we get through the four. Matt Manning only 52 pitches through four. If we could get him to go through six, that would be incredible. The 0-2 pitch. We're going to go slider outside. Gets him swinging. Matt Manning is on fire. Jimenez back up. I believe we struck him out the first time he was up. That one popped up out into left. I believe that's Gallo still out there making the play. Two down here in the top of the fifth. Now it's DeLauder's turn to go up against the all-dangerous Matt Manning. I'm going to go high and inside with the fastball. If it misses, it's whatever. Not quite high, but it was inside. DeLauder being really patient in this at-bat. Swings and misses, though. Manning retires the side again. What a start from Matt Manning. Only has the two runs for support from the first inning, but... It really hasn't mattered. Pitching with confidence, pitching with velocity. The changeup has been lethal today. It's now the third time through the lineup. Dingler under it behind the plate. Quan retired for the third time today. I usually would start warming up a reliever here. Thornton pushes one out, and it's, it is in play. I thought it was foul. O'Neal gets it in. Thornton with a stand-up double. His 10th of the year. I really didn't think that was in play because O'Neal kind of just gave up on it. Oh, I mean, by centimeters. That was fair. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. That time, Thornton got lucky. Ramirez pops that one up into right. O'Neal ranges over. We'll keep Thornton at second, and that's two down. Did I say Ramirez on that? I, I, I meant Naylor. Sorry, that's my bad. Got to be careful here with Ramirez. 347 with runners in scoring position. That one popped behind. Fouls it off. Makes it two and two. Got to put away Ramirez in this spot. Change up. Can't get him. Manning. The fastball. Ramirez gets a piece of it. That one misses. Runner goes to third. The throw is way off. Could have definitely gotten him. Manning may be losing it a little bit here. Has to get through this inning, though. We are not bringing in a reliever in this spot. And we get him looking. Matt Manning, unbelievable pitch control today. Come on. We will warm up Jason Foley in case we need him because Matt Manning's energy is a little bit low here to start off the seventh. That one popped up, though, in one pitch. Ball, Bo ball, Naylor ball. infield fly out to Colt Keith. That's one down. If we can get two more of those, we might be able to get through seven here with Matt Manning. Although that one is ripped. Left in the middle of the zone, Arias took Manning deep. You knew it off the bat. I mean, I don't think a single soul moved an inch. That was absolutely murdered. Big league hitters have too much control and power to leave that in the middle. They're at least going to get a double every single time on you. Manning may be losing a little bit of confidence here. Let's bring it back a little now. We're good. Change up. Got him swinging. If you lose confidence, just know you've got one of the best changeups in the game, I guess. Because the Cleveland Guardians batters have yet to even touch that thing. Five inches of break. I mean, Jimenez never had a chance. Two down in the top of the seventh. 
That one lined up back up the middle. And with that... Do we take Matt Manning out? We will. Dingler comes up to the mound. Matt Manning's day is done. Tyler Holton will come in. Did we lose? Oh, no, we won. Oh, my God. I thought it said that we lost, dude. I was like, no way did we let that go. Jose Leclerc gets the win. Gives up an earned run as well, but does get the win. Riley Green with a solo shot. Player of the game. So we win the first game 3-2, go up to 28-21. and 21. Win game two as well. Jose Escobedo, elbow tightness will keep him active. We sweep the Cleveland Guardians. Man, does that feel awesome. Terry Skubal gets his first win. Or third, fifth win. What? Ah! Fifth win. And now we've got the Yankees. Top of the 10th, two outs in a tie ball game. Carry Carpenter up to bat with Adames and Adele on base. Carpenter with a triple and a single today. A single would almost definitely score Adele in this position. Carpenter drills one out to center. Not deep enough, though. We go to the bottom of the 10th against a dangerous Yankees lineup. Casey Mize still in the game, 47 pitches deep. We might want to look to get him out of the game. Bring in our warm-up Lang and Tyler Holton. Oh, that sinker got a lot of plate. Merrifield lines it to Colt Keith at second, though. So we get a little bit bailed there. That slider got a lot of play, too. I cannot believe Oswald uh, kind of just let that hit the middle of the zone. And it's 0-2 quickly. Go back to the other side. Slider. Down low. Peraza swinging and missing. Mize continues his dominance here against the Yankees. They say it intentionally walk. Make it two and two. They wanted me to intentionally walk, but we're going to strike out Aaron Judge. Curveball. See, and what's the point when you got G Giancarlo Stanton up after Aaron Judge? Like, what, are you going to walk him too? We end up walking Aaron Judge there. Giancarlo standing 0 for 4 on the day. Sees a slider middle of the zone. I cannot believe these guys are not swinging at that. That should honestly be the end of the ball game right there with his type of power. And it might just be. Fastball got too much zone. It took one pitch later for them to end it. Yankees walk it off. Reese Olsen sustained an injury. Bruised ribs. What, did he get hit with a ball? We still win 8-4. How long did Olsen go? He only went four. But then Fado went four and two thirds with Miller to close it out. What a freaking relief. Riley Green, three hits on the day. Uh, as we got one more scouting assignment before the end of May. Thurston up to 23rd on our board. He looks really good, dude. Like, please let me know down in the comments if I'm just tripping or if he actually looks good. I know the velo really isn't there. But we've seen it before where sometimes guys can get these strikeouts without the velo. The control... And the break do scare me a little bit to match up with that strikeout number. But please let me know. Because we obviously want to hit on this pick. It's not like we're in the top 10. But I want to try and be better at scouting this year. Sean Boyer, those numbers kind of dropped off. But the strikeout number still looks pretty good. So that's good at least. Got two right fielders scouted. George Gonzalez. Looks like a defender. Levi Mora. He doesn't look that bad. Let's actually cancel that scouting assignment and go scout Levi Mora. We will switch Sean Boyer for Charles Cato, who is 5'7", but 
somehow has absurd power. Bottom of the eighth, Matt Manning has gone seven innings again. This guy's a demon. We'll let him finish that one out. We beat the Yankees 4-2. So we win the series 2-1 in New York. And now I have to go back to Kansas City. Yeah, you might be on the 60 day on that one. Bottom of the ninth. But like I was saying, we were back in Kansas City now in the Midwest. And we've got a save opportunity for Jose Leclerc yet again. Isbell on base. Garcia at the plate. That one is ripped into center. We switch to Riley Green. I don't think it's going to be in time. It's going to be a triple for Michael Garcia. Roped one into the gap. And now we just need to hold. Obviously, we met up with the Royals on opening day. Beat us by, I believe, a run. Would love to get our revenge here in their home ballpark. Runner goes home. Whip gets a bunt walk off. That is wild. I should have thrown it at his goddamn mouth. If he was going to do that. Game's the game, I guess. But we can get revenge here in game two with Riley Green. Two outs, two runners on. Chris Stratton on the mound for the save. Riley Green rips one up the middle. Runner goes home and this game is tied. Exactly the guy we want up in that position. And he delivers. And they'll bring in Nick Anderson. Why would I bring in a pinch runner for Riley Green? He can run just fine. If anything, it would be... Who's on second? Colt Keith. Brandon Drury in the cleanup spot today. And Drury pops it up. And we go to extras. Or not extras. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Goes to the top of the tenth with Joey Gallo. Lefty versus righty. Gallo has... So much power, and we were almost on that one. One for four on the day. Anderson playing with fire. That one gets through. We're going to send the runner home. We're probably going to send the runner to third as well. Gallo puts us up one run. Did not get great contact, but it bounces over the first baseman. For an RBI single here in the top of the 10th. Strike two called. Bottom of the zone. Dingler with two outs. Two runners on. Dingler gets good contact. But that will be a pop out into center field. And we will go to the bottom of the 10th. Bobby Witt. Another... William, use your legs. Sorry, that was Garrett Hampton who got the bunt the there. Ball. Kansas City full of bunters, like. He's up. Throw to. Two. One and two. Perez looks at that one. Oh, that one's way off. This time runner goes, and he will get to third without a doubt. Is huge here. That one popped up. Behind first base, Cole Keith ranging over from second. Runner stays at third. I almost just had a goddamn heart attack. Freddie Fermin now at the plate. Young catcher. Ball. I believe got a, a good piece of us on opening day. That one popped up into left for Gallo. Easy play. <laughs> the 11th we go. 0 for 4 on the day. Can't get a hold of the fastball. Under it. We we're on the right side of good there. The right contact. We could have honestly driven that thing out. Anderson to O'Neal. Oh, I think we were out in front of that. Colt Keith 3 for 5 on the day. Colt Keith with some decent contact. I don't think it's enough, though, to tag up. And now Riley Green 
He tied this ball game up originally. Good contact out to center. Ranging back. Easy play. I thought that was going to go a lot farther, but Isbell makes the play, and we go to the bottom of the 11th. Did not think that this game would go this far. We will bring in Jason Foley. Whoa, that sinker had a lot of break. Two for four on the day is Renfro. Swings and misses at the changeup. Jason Foley. Okay. That thing had some serious break on it. 556 with runners in scoring position is Michael Massey this year. That's a foul. Don't love that we have Joey Gallo out in the left. If we need a play to be made, Massey swings and misses. Two up, two down for Foley. Both strikeouts. Sinker's been our go-to. Melendez swings and misses. One and two the count. Change up, same spot. Melendez swings and misses. Fully dominant inning. Again, why would I be switching Riley Green? He is fine with 70 speed, and I want to keep him out and left. They bring in Will Smith. How smart of an idea is that with some righties that can absolutely demolish left-handing pitches or pitching? I guess we're about to find out. Pause. That one misses. Runner goes to third. Riley Green is in there. Wild pitch from Will Smith. Gives us the time to get to third. Drury swings and misses. Out number one for Will Smith. We can pull one out to right with Carpenter here. I really like our chances at tagging up from third. Ninth pitch of the inning for Will Smith. Carpenter, that one's in there for a base knock. We don't even need a sack fly. Harry Carpenter reaches first and brings home Riley Green. And now we've got Willie Adamez, big time free agency signing. Has been electric in the month of May. Hits righties actually a little bit better than he does lefties. Which is a little bit interesting, but he can still bring the juice. Change up middle of the zone. We were late, late side of good, which doesn't help. Slider misses down low. Torkelson, do up. Adamez swing and a drive to deep left field. Stand up, Detroit. Come on. Takes Will Smith yard. Oh my goodness. 107 off the bat. 412 to left. Good night, Kansas City. Willie Adamez with a bomb. I think I might have a boner. Torkelson in the seven spot. With a three-run oh. lead now in the top of the 12th. Oh, no. Are the tides turning for us in extras? We've had so much, right, or so many, sorry, games that have gone to extras where we just have not been able to finish. Pause. Now with a three-run lead, LeClerc will be scheduled to be put right. in the game. Torkelson swings and misses. For out number two, we will also stretch uh, Shelby Miller because LeClerc doesn't have a ton of energy just because he closed the night prior. One and one. Schreiber gets us to swing at strike two. That arm angle is so tough to see where those sliders are really going. Gallo grounds to second. I believe Hampton over to first. Or maybe Rojas. 
as we go to the bottom of the 12th. Leclerc has only missed out on two save opportunities this year. Chapman took us deep on opening day. Let's not have that happen again. Leclerc hiding inside, and they say Chapman went around. One down here in the bottom of the 12th, and now it's Michael Garcia's turn. One and two the count. We're going to go to Leclerc's slider. Garcia stays off of it. Stays off of a strikeout as well. Garcia goes down looking. Leclerc looking to get his revenge. Was I calling Garrett Hampson Garrett Hampton? That's on me. I don't know what I was doing. I think I might be illiterate. Hampson goes after the cutter up top. Pitcher getting tired. That's all right. We're only going to go one pitch longer. Counts full. Oh! Did not hit it. Just just miss the ball, please. Miss. And we will walk Garrett Hampson. So that brings up the game tying run to the plate with Bobby Witt Jr. Not quite what you want to do in that situation. Right. Looks at strike one, though. That one he swings. Popped up into left. Gallo under it. Leclerc will get the save. Tigers win it in Kansas City in 12. What a ball game. Adamez with the two-run jack to put us up three really put the game away. We win game three as Reese Olsen is no longer injured, thank goodness. We win game four, so we go 3-1 like I said we needed to as Luis Urias is being put in, our, in a trade for, was it Gallo? Alex Lang. I actually really like what Jace Young has done for us. And Urias is kind of more of a defensive-minded player anyways. So I think we'll keep Lang because our pitching has been awesome. Bottom of the eighth, one out. This will be the last one we hop into here against the Dodgers for this episode. Brandon Drury against Evan Phillips. We lost game one to the Dodgers 5-1. Down a run here in the bottom of the eighth. Be huge to tie it back up. Tanner Scott in the pen getting warmed up. Drury misses on the cutter. Drury grounds. <sighs> Makes it a full count. Wouldn't be surprised to see him to go back up to that fastball. Three. Goes to the curve. Drury strikes out swinging. And Adam is now up to bat. Obviously, an electric home run against the Royals just a couple games ago. Would love to see that same type of production here. But obviously, we can't ask for that. Well, I believe an MVP chant was going on behind us. If I heard that right. 19th pitch of the inning for Evan Phillips. We barely get contact on that cutter to stay alive. Makes it another full count here, this time to Adames. Payoff pitch. No, that's a ball. Take Cold ball. And now base is loaded. They will bring in Bruzdar Gratterall to go up against Spencer Torkelson. Ball one, no strike. Maybe a little bit of a home field advantage on that call because... That was definitely a strike. Nope. That one misses outside. Wouldn't have been surprised to see a uh, makeup call on that one. But they do call it a ball. Fastball pushed 99 right by us. Wouldn't be surprised to see that again. Sinker dead center of the zone on top of it. Payoff pitch times two. Dodgers end up getting their strikeout. I do think I went around. It was close, though. Bottom of the ninth, one out. Riley Green at the plate. 
with Jace Young at second. So runner is in scoring position. Tanner Scott here to close the game out for the Dodgers. Green can't get on the fastball. Good timing, just couldn't get on top of it. Scott makes it a full count with Jake Rogers on deck. He's going, he's going, he's going. Runner goes. Young is not going to be there in time. I did not make that call, by the way. I have no idea what they th were thinking because I did not press a single button. And if I did, I'm delusional. We are tied for the top of the AL Central, however, with the Twins, who are 3-7 and seven in their last 10. And we are second in the league in power. If we could just get on base more, it looks like. We could really turn it up a notch. Charles Cato looks to have unreal power. Do I take a chance at a five foot seven third baseman? Y'all let me know down in the comments, man. Does height matter in this game? Levi Mora looks pretty solid. I think we're gonna keep these three as the scouting assignment to get more uh progress on them. We will sim to the end of this game. Dodgers defeat or Tigers defeat the Dodgers, so we get one game to go to 36 and 25, still in a dead tie with the Twins. I really wish we saw them sooner than we did. We have to wait till July to see them. But then we see them twice in that month, actually. Do we see them in September? No. So we only have three series against them? Oh, no, we played them earlier this season. I was like, what? That will be the episode, though. We get through May a ton of crazy games check the standings really quickly twins and tigers atop the al wild card our pitching and power are both really solid our defense looks like it's better than theirs as well just need a little bit better contact to get on base more consistently and we might go somewhere this year playoffs are obviously the goal dude i really like the way we've constructed this team actually joey gallo playing Actually kind of solid. 817 OPS. Willie Adames, might I add. He need 238. Says he's cold. I kind of doubt that because of what he's done. 360 on base percentage. So that has dropped a little bit. Still over 800 OPS. What's his war? 2.6 right now. That would be second best of his career. So hopefully he keeps those numbers up. Some of his best fielding is also being... His best, actually. He's playing the best he's ever played as a fielder. I mean, I can't ask for much more. He's drawn 38 walks, has 50 hits. Would love to see the strikeout numbers stay down, but I seriously don't know if I can ask for much more. I mean, the dude has been phenomenal for us. Jake Rogers is up to the four spot. Colt Keith is up to the two spot, hitting 299 in 21 games. All right. So we're not only getting production from our vets, but Colt Keith, along with Dylan Dingler, where I guess we now have brought up Scotty Phelps, who we drafted last year. Yeah, I'll fix that after. But some of the trade acquisitions that we've gotten, um, Joe Adele has been actually somewhat decent for us. Not great, but we're playing some good baseball right now. Some really, really good baseball. Torkelson up to 261. Still only five home runs, but we have a ton of team home runs. Adamas has 11, O'Neill has five, Green has six, Drury seven, Carpenter 13, Rogers 10, Young five, none for Adele, Colt Keith has five, Gallo has eight, Badu has four. Like, the production is just spread, which I will take. But I would also love to see Spencer Torkelson really take off. But that will be for another episode um, because this one has gone a little bit long. I appreciate you guys so much for watching this uh, video. And I appreciate the support that this series has gotten. Um, so please leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed, um, and comment down below on that scouting stuff that I was talking about. I'll see you all in the next one. Take it easy and peace.